gentlemen, uh, with that, I now uh, get the privilege of introducing our Honorable Chief Guest, Sri Ajay Kumar Bhalla, Secretary, Ministry of Power, Government of India. Uh, he was Director General of Foreign Trade with effect from 20th October 2016 with additional charge of Director IFT between 2016 and 2017. Before joining DGFT, Sri Bhalla worked as additional Secretary, Department of Commerce, Government of India, and he also functioned as Designated Authority, Directorate General Anti-Dumping, uh, in, uh, since 2015. Prior to this assignment, Sri Bhalla worked as Joint Secretary, Ministry of Coal, Government of India, and Additional Secretary, Ministry of Coal. And in previous assignments in Government of India, Sri Bhalla has worked as Director Ports in the Department of Shipping and looked after the port operations and human resource development matters of all the major ports in the country. Sri Bhalla has also handled various assignments in the CADA in the states of Assam and Meghalaya. I'm going to request him to address all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome our chief guest, Shri Ajay Kumar Bhalla. Very good afternoon. We have migrated from morning to the afternoon, actually. We were supposed to finishing it by 12 o'clock. His Excellency, Ambassador of uh, European Union to India, other dignitaries on the dais, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. Pillay, especially, who is the, the chief architect of this whole event. I warmly welcome uh, all the dignitaries to this uh, morning session. I was here last year also uh, at the fourth edition, as mentioned by Mr. Pillay earlier. And I'm very happy and delighted to be here again and I understand, as it was mentioned in the beginning, the event has now expanded uh, to a India Smart Utility Week uh, this year. So, I mean, I'm sure more, more activities and more uh, interactions would take place. Majority of the organization's sponsors, speakers and experts have assembled again this year. So, I'm sure uh, we will have better outcomes for the years to come. So during this last one year, some of the speakers have highlighted that where have we reached, what have we done. Uh, if we say we have connected all the villages, we have collected, uh, connected 25 million households, that's a perhaps basic minimum needs or a minimum requirement of the development which we ought to have done maybe much earlier. But at least it's a good thing that finally we have been able to reach to as many people as possible whom we could connect. We have tried to do it almost all parts of the country, leaving aside few areas in the states of Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh, where also efforts are going on to complete the work within 31st March. Uh, so that, that's a, I mean, it's in terms of numbers, it sounds very big. But it was a basic need which we ought to carry to the people. So we are very happy that we have been able to do it. On the generation side, we have reached a capacity, installed capacity of about 350 gigawatts, out of which about 75 gigawatt is renewable of uh, mainly solar and wind. So in 2003, when we brought in uh, reforms in the electricity sector, we separated generation, transmission, distribution. So over the years, generation has improved, competition has come in, private participation has come in. And in the recent years, stress on renewable energy has come in. And we have put our very stiff targets of achieving 175 gigawatt of renewable energy out of which 100 gigawatt would be solar by March of 2022. So, and then Transmission side also, we made remarkable improvements. Mr. Uh, Ravi P. Singh explained uh, in terms of uh, numbers as well as uh, technology and uh, inter-regional or interstate transmission capacities are now surplus or N minus one in technical terms. And uh, we are expanding these capacities further, ensuring that the whole nation can be delivered power across this thing. There comes the last important sector of power, the distribution sector. And rightly so, it was mentioned, still the losses are high. Uh, distribution utilities have certain structural issues to be reformed. So 
when we have improved upon different sectors, we are focused on this also, not that we are not doing it. And uh, different financial restructuring schemes have been happening over the years. But what I would like to say is when we got down to connect villages and households, it's not simply that we have gone and put a connection and then said, okay, village is electrified or house is electrified. It involves a lot of building of infrastructure. The distribution setup in rural areas was very, very weak. And uh, we, have, we have spent a lot of money and we are spending a lot of money in the next three years to strengthen the whole network of distribution in the rural areas. In urban areas, we have achieved a remarkable improvement. As a uh, few years, many years earlier, electricity, I mean, even in uh, cities and um, place like Delhi, every household would have a genset or an inverter. But today, uh, we have reached a situation, perhaps we don't need it. So gradually, things have improved. So what is our next target? We are looking at a 24 by 7 supply. Why I am saying all these things that this is how we have graduated over a period of time. And smart systems are definitely now following us in all these places actually. So what we are looking at is once you have given a connection and you initially the household is very apprehensive in my opinion. Government has given a connection whether power will come or not we don't know. So you are not very much keen to use it also. But once you get used to electricity, then you don't want to leave it. Then you are a pressure lobby to ensure that power is delivered. Very rightly mentioned by Mr. Natarajan that uh, cricket match, the final over, if your power goes on, then you, you are in trouble. And Mr. Sinha sitting next to me was telling me there used to be a very popular serial, Ramayana. Ramayana used to be weekly telecast. Peak, uh, uh, this thing, used to come at that point of time. And you, you have to ensure that the power is supplied. So what I want to say is, once people get used to electricity, then it is a service which you have to deliver, you have to provide. So we are gearing for that. We are taking our distribution utilities to this level that you are not only providing connections, you are not only improving infrastructure, you have to be efficient and financially healthy to ensure that power is delivered to each and every place. And then that sets up a chain of growth, economic activities, and uh, we are seeing where we are, like we have, over the last one and a half year, we have been providing connections in certain remotest parts of the country. It's not that the power demand starts going up immediately. The user waits for the reliability of the electricity. And after certain times, he will go and buy a TV set, he will go and buy a refrigerator. He starts using it and then the local flour mills and other, other commercial activities start happening. So it's, it takes time to reach there. Now, what is happening is that financial health of the discoms is a matter of concern. Speakers have mentioned it. All of us are aware of it. So, what do we do to check losses? The grid improvement, the smartness of the system is one thing which we should be bringing in. So, government as a policy is now contemplating, I mean, we are bringing in schemes also to that extent, that in next three years time frame, we should have smart meters with all connections. So it's a quite a challenging task, but we will try to push it and ensure that we are able to deliver it. The system has got used to targets, got used to delivering it within reasonable times and got used to delivering it in a compressed time frame also. So we are looking at that and when we look at this situation, not that we have not done anything. Smart meters we have tried both as OPEX model as well as CAPEX model. CAPEX model hasn't delivered much, but OPEX model may our companies, ESCO companies, type ESL type of companies have done very good activity for uh, two, three states. I would mention Haryana and Uttar Pradesh specifically. And the NDMC area, one part of central Delhi has now been put all smart meters. We are all, I mean, the people who live there at least are aware of it, that uh, it's all smart metering system, smart billing, you know how, what type of power you are consuming, what when is your load going up and all, all those things you can see yourself. So gradually, I mean, we have to look at all these things and the lifestyle is changing. I don't know, I mean, ultimately technology can make the electrons flow in a Wi-Fi manner or not, 
but definitely that is where we should be looking at that I should be able to get my electricity at my sweet will the way I want to use it. So that is what all of us I think are deliberating over this period of uh, two days or, or this week I would say a lot of sessions lined up for uh, discussions and all. So which would definitely bring out a lot of things. Generally whenever ISGF has uh, organized these type of events they bring a set of recommendations to us also and ministry tries to use this implement it through our uh, uh, various programs and agencies and all. So on demand side also we have been trying to do a lot of things which again would require smart metering and integration of renewable energy also would need smart grids. So we these are all on our agenda when we integrate 175 gigawatt of renewable energy uh, capacities by 2022 we need to be very very uh, uh, I mean electronically or smartly active into integration because the kind of uh, peak which India gets is the post sunset. So we need to integrate that uh, uh, energy, flexible energy at a point of time, which is only possible through smart means. Inter at the national level, we have already achieved that. We have a grid operator is already uh, procuring uh, certain system, uh, putting certain systems in place to ensure that the whole grid stability, the frequency is maintained. When I say on the demand side, we are looking at, we have a Paris commitment, installed capacity commitments, we definitely are going to achieve much earlier than 2030. The other commitment is the carbon emissions reduction as well as I mean the GDP, uh, carbon intensity with the GDP growth. On energy efficiency side, India has done very well. Whenever we have spoken in international fora, our efforts on energy efficiency front has been re uh, recognized very, very uh, highly. Uh, our LED program, Honorable Prime Minister has mentioned in many speeches, has been a remarkable change. We started with small numbers, but today not only the price of LED bulb has come down, the huge numbers which we have been able to distribute and sell in the rural areas has led to huge amount of energy savings. It, it can, in terms of numbers and amount, it is really huge when we say we have done so many of LED lighting and all, all the railway stations, the government buildings, street light uh, programs in most of the municipalities is all now in the LED base. Besides that, we have the standard and labeling program of the equipments to become more star rated equipments are being used, especially high in energy consuming equipments. Thirdly, we are looking at energy intensive industries. We are bringing in a system of perform, achieve and trade. We are over a certain period of time of a cycle of three years, you need to improve your energy consumption by efficient means, by improving technology so that there are energy savings. If you do more savings, you want certain certificates which get traded in an exchange. So all, I mean, these are the programs which we are implementing and uh, we have now brought out a energy efficiency building code for commercial buildings as well as domestic uh, residential buildings. All these things are now in uh, being implemented by different state governments. We are ensuring the timely implementation of these. These are the steps which are going to lead to huge energy savings so that our Paris commitments remain within our achievement and we try to do that before the goal, our target of 2030. So I once again would like to compliment Mr. Pillay and this uh, organization for giving us an opportunity to come and interact here and holding this event on a regular basis to ensure that experts from all over different parts of the world come, interact and provide recommendations which become our base for our future this thing. Thank you very much once again.